Welcome to That's Good Sp- Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. I'm skipping training camp because I wasn't invited again despite being back-to-back Denver media champion Perna. It's basically football season for all of us football junkies. We've been shaken sick with withdrawal since the draft ended and TMZ didn't provide us any footage of a drunk John Elway in L.A. Akib Talib did not shoot himself in the leg this offseason, but training camp starts Friday. And I wanted to talk about five players not named Case Keenum that I think could have the biggest impact on the Broncos this season. Who are they? Well, you're going to have to watch the rest of the goddamn video for me to tell you. Let's get sports. Please make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's good sports. If you're already subbed, click the notification button. YouTube loves it when you do that. Uh, I do have big dick Patreon shout outs to Bronny, Ryder, and Davis Knoll for both hitting me with the $5 donation. Uh, $5 makes you eligible for my monthly merch giveaway on Patreon. Uh, I do offer things there. Usually a Patreon only podcast, Alan Sharp, has been busy with his new kid, but we'll get back on that soon. And that's how this channel stays alive. So I appreciate your support. New transition time. (laughs) Case Keenum by far can turn last year's sinking boat into a smooth sailing schooner like the great Captain Ron as he steers this football ship through the choppy NFL waters that is the 2018 season. That's true for any quarterback in the league though, right? Today is about digging a little deeper into players who can make a significant impact that may not have done that last year because they were either uh, uh, underperforming or weren't on the team. So, for example, Chris Harris Jr. will have an impact on this defense, but I'm not gonna talk about that because he's a proven, consistent player who we know will play well. Instead, I'm gonna start my number five player with defensive end Demarcus Walker, the forgotten second round draft pick from Florida State. I had high expectations for Walker last season. That is, until the Broncos tried to move him to outside linebacker with injuries to Shane Ray and Shaq Barrett. This season, Walker will get a chance to play at his natural position, missionary, or defensive end. Now, Walker may end up as the starting right defensive end, depending on whether or not the Adam Gotsis rape charges are cleared. Leaving that terrible situation out of this conversation, Walker should get more playing time this season. And if Joe Woods in his second year can get a bit more creative, the Broncos with the healthy Derek Wolf, Zach Kerr, Shelby Harris, Clinton McDonald, and Demarcus Walker could deploy some effective four-man fronts or rotate ends frequently, which the Eagles did with mastery last season on their way to the Super Bowl. Also, my sister named her firstborn son Walker this summer. That is a good sign, if you ask me, for Demarcus Walker. Number four, tight end, Jake Butt. Jake Butt shirt's available at my store link at (laughs) thatsgoodsports.com. Imagine. Now, some depth charts have Butt as the starting tight end. Other depth charts have Jeff Hireman. I think we all expect Jake Butt to be the starter and to actually provide Case Keenum with a legitimate passing threat from the tight end position. By virtue of Keenum slinging the rock made of skinned pigs, whoever ends up as tight end number one will be more successful than the previous two years. Some people think Jake Butt may start slow and say shit like, oh, but he's returning from that ACL injury. He tore that. ACL, remember? Yeah, he toured in December of 2016. His knee is fine after more than a year and a half of rehab. I expect him to come in full speed, ready to blast some bitches off the line. And by bitches, I mean the Raiders and Chargers and Chiefs linebackers slash safeties that think they can cover him. Also watch out for Troy Fumagalli to surpass Jeff Hireman on the depth chart as well. He's a pretty good blocking tight end with great hands despite only having nine fingers and he was born in Aurora, Illinois. Uh, Assuming he bought a house or rents his apartment here in Aurora, Colorado, I think his success will continue. But if that idiot purchased a home in Highlands Ranch, the Broncos are fucked. Coming in at number three, 
Demarius Thomas. Wait, you said you weren't gonna talk about star players. I know, but I believe Thomas has a very good chance to add a couple hundred yards uh, to his receiving numbers and double his touchdowns from what we saw in 2017. Last season was his worst since being forced to block for Tim Tebow in 2011. And even with the Cerberus that was Simeon Lynch and Osweiler, DT caught 83 balls for 949 yards and five touchdowns. The offense, even when it made it into the red zone, was horrible last year. Case Keenum had a 64% completion percentage in the red zone, a 97.2 passer rating in the red zone. Demarius Thomas is the best target for him in the red zone, and I watched the NFL red zone. And that is why I really believe his touchdowns can double from five to 10, say this season. I also think the offense as a whole will be on the field more. Keenum had an 83.9 passer rating on third downs, which would lead to more sustained drives with far fewer turnovers results in more targets for Demarius Thomas, who may be in his last year or two as a true number one wide receiver. Number two, Tremaine Brock, cornerback. It's no secret I hate that Aqib Talib is gone. I think he has uh, two good years left in him at least, which were in his contract to be a Bronco. I respect how low his 84 yards after catch uh, allowed was, fifth best in the league, and there is no replacing his attitude or terrible sense of fashion. I also believe Bradley Roby will fill in uh, for Talib admirably. But in order for this secondary to not take a significant drop into mediocrity, Tremaine Brock is going to have to come in and play at the level he did in 2015 and 16, or hell, like he did in 2013, when he had five interceptions and just seven starts. I don't know what to expect from Brock. In fact, the name Brock is kind of ruined for me. I had high hopes for a Brock not that long ago, only to have it wiped away by the Texans and his terrible play as a starter. If Tremaine comes in and is at worst an average corner, that's a small win for this defense. If he's above average, this defense may not have any gaping holes. The opposite of a Jimmy Garoppolo dinner date. <laughs> You're too much, Brett. That is disgusting, but accurate. That's the big question mark. And if Brock doesn't play well or gets hurt, the Broncos depth is very concerning at corner. Uh, don't pretend like Brendan Langley, Marcus Rios, Isaac Yidem, Michael Hunter, or CJ Smith is the next Chris Harris. Pray that one of them is, but assume they're not. Again, I'm not sure how good Tremaine Brock is, but this list is about the players who I think have potential to have the biggest impact at their position. Okay, fine. Fine, I should have made this video seven players that could have an impact on the Broncos. Uh, I should have talked about uh, Jared Valdir and Garrett Bowles. Maybe just combine them in, in, into one. Because if Garrett Bowles uh, improves at left tackle, that's huge for the line. I think he has a chance with Ron Leary playing next to him. And also, if Jared Valdir pans out to be a good right tackle, if he stays healthy, the offensive line gets significantly better. And its biggest weakness, which has been the right tackle position, by far, by by very far, uh, that will significantly improve what Case Keenum can do as a first-year quarterback for the Broncos, how the running game shakes out, and of course, uh, time for receivers to get open and let Case Keenum do his thing by moving around, extending plays, and uh, just, you know, big dick balling. So I should have included those guys. But I didn't. But now I did. Well, here we are. Number one. The name you have kind of been waiting for. And it is Sua Cravens, the nightmare on Elm Street. Even with Chris Harris, Aqib Tlaib, and Bradley Roby, possibly the best three corner tandem plus a unicycle in the NFL, the Broncos got worked by tight ends and running backs the last two seasons. That became an issue the second Danny Trevathan left, uh, who, by the way, was one of the best coverage backers in the league last year. Sue Cravens has been brought in to be that Swiss Army knife, uh, safety slash nickel linebacker who can match up with tight ends or running backs or anyone catching balls where mismatches with thumping linebackers occur. 
If Bradley, Roby, or Tremaine Brock struggle locking down wideouts on the outside, then Cravens won't really matter because the Broncos' defense will be beat the old-fashioned way with the wide receiver number one catching two to three touchdowns and going for 150 yards. But assuming the combo of the Broncos' pass rush and secondary force teams to rely on those shitty short passes that go for 20, 30, 40, 100 fucking yards, Sue Cravens could become their Freddy Krueger, turning their nightmares into even more embarrassing wet dreams, which is what happens when you dream about a water park. I have them every night before I go to Waterworld. The pressure is really on uh, Cravens and Tremaine Brock to elevate the play of this Denver defense. Uh, I did have a runner-up, long shot player, who could make huge contributions as a returner. See you running back and local to first named legend, Philip Lindsay. With four running backs ahead of him on the depth chart, heading into training camp and being an undrafted player, Philip Lindsay has an uphill battle in roller skates Roller skates, not roller blades, to make this team. However, he did return some kicks in college, and if he can also function as a reliable punt returner, he could make the team, and if he turns out to be a good punt returner, that would be a huge upgrade for the Broncos' special teams department that ranked out as one of the worst in the NFL in 2017. So, with training camp starting, keep your eye on all of those guys. Your left eye the way Lisa Left Eye Lopez would have wanted. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. You know, I've got a podcast. It just went up today. It's on my second channel, That's Good Broncos. It's also on iTunes and Podbean. It's the That's Good Sports podcast. Please give it a listen, rank it in iTunes. All the shit they tell you to do is actually very important. So, you know, do it for me.